Did Missouri luck out and get a favorable schedule in 2024? Plus, what is it going to take for Missouri to secure a spot in the first 12-team college football playoff? Let's talk about all that and more on this 24 schedule release coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters. I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150. If your team wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And we've actually known for a few months now what Missouri's SEC schedule was going to look like in terms of opponents in 2024 on the gridiron, but we didn't have any actual dates yet. Well, that changed last night, a big schedule reveal, and boy, people really love a good football schedule reveal these days, I can tell you that much. And you know what? If for those of you who are watching on YouTube, I'm going to go ahead and just throw that schedule up for you now. We'll just take a look at it. We'll just throw it over my beautiful face. I'm sorry, ladies. We all have to make sacrifices. But you know what? Let's pull up the Missouri football schedule. And much like last season, it certainly looks like the Tigers have a good chance to get off to a quick start in the non-conference schedule. And in fact, while Boston College in week three there at home is maybe a little bit more of a trap game than you might imagine, I also think that Eli Drinkwitz and Missouri, I think he'll have plenty of reminders of Missouri getting upset in 2021 up in Boston. I was at that game in fact and in fact I was just going wait what was the last road game I attended that was it it was Boston back in 2021 I had almost forgotten about that little road trip but obviously Murray State Buffalo those should be wins just like the start of last season but then week three you get what is a power five opponent in ACC's Boston College Eagles now obviously Boston College not expected to be as good as Kansas State was last season but again a bit of a revenge game for the Tigers once again in week three then you get Vanderbilt in week four before an open week and going to Texas A&M in week six for Missouri. Now, an interesting part of this schedule is that there are two open bye weeks for Missouri, one on the 28th of September, one on November 2nd after the Alabama game. So you kind of get a little nice a four-game stretch, a bye week, another four-game stretch, a bye week, and then four more games to finish the season. So just in terms of breaking up the schedule, in terms of rest and injury recovery and all that good stuff, I think this schedule actually sets up nicely for Missouri. And quite honestly, if you're looking at this schedule, clearly the toughest ball game of the season on paper is at Alabama on the 26th. Well, to have a bye week after that game, I think we've seen this over and over again. A pretty good trend is teams that play Alabama or Georgia or any really elite team. The very next week, it can be awfully hard to come back and play as well and get up as much as you did that previous week. So I think for Missouri to have a bye week after Alabama and before the Oklahoma game at home for the Tigers, I think is a really big victory just in terms of how the schedule played out for Missouri. So again, while at Alabama is your toughest game on paper, what what's number two? It's probably Oklahoma at home, right? So to, again, have that bye week before the Sooners to me is a big deal. Now, if it's not Oklahoma, maybe it's Texas A&M on the road. Believe it or not, the Aggies with a new coach 
They've got plenty of talent. They've never lacked for talent. Perhaps the Aggies, their first year under Mike Elko, will find some offense, although maybe it's more likely that it takes a little bit more time for the Aggies to adjust to a new coach. So to me, this schedule sets up rather nicely for Missouri to go potentially 12 and 1, 10 and 2, once again that type of record. I think 10 and 2 will almost certainly get Missouri into the 12 team college football playoff, which is of course debuting next season. Honestly, will 9 and 3 do it? I think that's the real question here. I think 10 and 2 is now is now sort of the the marker for getting into the college football playoff whereas in previous years obviously, hey, you can maybe get away with one loss. Obviously, we all know Florida State didn't get away with anything this particular season. They they won all their games, lost their quarterback, still got out. So the four-team playoff, a much different calculation, whereas now with 12 teams, you can almost relax a little bit more in the college football regular season. And let's say Missouri loses in week six to Texas A&M, well, you're not just immediately going, oh, no, our season's over. We can't possibly make the college football playoff. In this scenario, you can easily lose a couple games and get in, as Missouri clearly would have done in 2023 if it were a 12-team playoff. And really, even though 10-2 and two should be the goal, I think, for Missouri to repeat its 2023 record in 2000. And 24 and make the college football playoff. That should really ultimately be Missouri's goal next season. Heck, why not 12 and 0, to be honest with you? Now, don't get me wrong, there's a bunch of games that Missouri could have lost this past season and could have been looking at, say, 8 and 4 instead of 10 and 2. But they didn't. And they also could have had a few plays that could have gone the other way and they could have been a 12 and 0. So what all I'm saying here is there's no reason that Missouri should be looking at the Alabama game for instance and thinking, well that's an automatic loss. There is not an automatic loss on this schedule. The 2023 season changed expectations, I think for everybody around this Missouri football program, certainly did for me without a doubt. So, even though I'm saying 10 and 2 is the goal, I'm certainly not ruling out an undefeated Missouri season. It's not likely, but at the same time, you can't say it's impossible. Look at that schedule. It's pretty manageable. And for the SEC fans who are saying, boy, Missouri got a bit of a break with a relatively easy schedule here, I would actually have to agree with you. And indeed, one of the interesting parts about this is that, of course, for a while now, there's been rumors that eventually the SEC is going to go to a nine-game instead of an eight-game SEC conference schedule, and then you will play three teams permanently, have three permanent opponents, and then rotate the other six in and out every year. Well, the rumored threesome that has been going around forever with Missouri has been Oklahoma and Arkansas, certainly, and a lot of people have had Vanderbilt as the third team for Missouri. Well, that's exactly who Missouri is playing in 2023, excuse me, in 24. And I think if you look throughout the SEC, you'll find that basically everybody's assumed, rumored threesome there. There are three permanent opponents all basically are intact during this 2024 season. Long story short, I think still the nine-game schedule with that particular three permanent opponent structure is still inevitable. I really do. And coming up, a former Tiger is transferring back in to the SEC, though not against a Missouri opponent in 2024. Still an interesting note, though, to me on a former Tiger, again, entering back into the old SEC East. So let's talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. But first, I want to tell you about prize picks, because in my opinion, prize picks is the easiest and best way to play daily fantasy sports. All you got to do is take a combination of two to six players, go more or less on their stat projections, and you're good to go, folks. It really is as simple as that. And by the way, if you've been, I've often said, hey, you should probably go less than. The bias from the public is more to the more side of things. Well, if you want to make 
low scoring, more exciting, I have an idea for you. Do their soccer options too because it's all about the keepers on prize picks. You can even go interleague as well. Take Roma's keeper to get more than two saves, for instance. You can also combine him with, say, oh, I don't know, Tottenham's keeper. And again, you can go the Italy league, the English league, the whole thing. Go Tottenham's keeper for over two and a half saves as well. But regardless of what you're into, prize picks offer you a reboot policy. This is my favorite thing. So if somebody gets injured in the first half, they don't come back in the second, well, your entry is rebooted. They're the only people in DFS that offers an injury insurance policy. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to a hundred bucks. It's prize picks daily fantasy sports made easy. And thanks for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen every day. For your second listen, go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Again, that's Locked On Sports Today on YouTube. And by the way, some interesting news, Jay Macklin, Jamori Macklin, as he's more commonly known these days, had a heck of a season this past year for the mean green of North Texas after transferring his freshman year, played 2020 at Mizzou, just one catch for five yards on that season. I have to admit, I thought Macklin was going to be more of a possession type receiver than his very famous cousin, of course, Jeremy Macklin. But you know what? Last season, Jay Macklin, Jamori, one of the, the top most explosive players in all of college football last year, had tons of long touchdowns, over 1,000 yards on just about 60 receptions or so, I believe. So one of the leaders in the country just in terms of yards per catch. He was a really, really impressive player last year. So it's not a huge surprise that when Macklin entered the transfer portal, he would have plenty of suitors and indeed wound up back in the old SEC East with the Kentucky Wildcats. So honestly, congratulations to Jay Macklin, a guy I'm definitely rooting for, for sure. And it's going to be a lot easier to root for him next year, considering Missouri does not play Kentucky by the way, next season, which feels weird at this point, right? After all these years, after a, more than a decade now of being in the SEC, it felt like we had we had gotten an actual rivalry going with Kentucky and Tennessee, and, and to a lesser extent, Georgia, obviously, I would say, too. Certainly, there's just a lot of history now that is, it isn't going by the wayside, but all of that built-in history is going to be lost, I think, just a tiny bit because not only does Missouri not play Kentucky next year, they don't play Tennessee or Georgia either. So I'll be honest, that does make me a little bit sad a tiny bit, but at the same time, it's nice to see new blood, some new, new trips, being able to go to Alabama again next year, being able to go to, I believe, Starkville for maybe the first time ever, certainly the second time I think this is the first time ever that Missouri is going to Starkville to play Mississippi State by the way and just a few more schedule notes here of course Missouri and Arkansas still playing on the final week of the season in 2024 though as of now it is not a Black Friday game I'm not sure if that game will be moved or not it seems like in the past there has been a little bit of a window there where originally, okay, the game is scheduled for a Saturday, but there's still time for CBS to decide if they want to pick that game up or not. I'll be honest with you, the the sort of lure and, and, and advantages of playing on Black Friday have mostly gone away, really, for Missouri, from my perspective as a Missouri fan anyway, the last few years here, because... A few years ago, Missouri was basically the only football game on television that day. Maybe there was one or two other college games that would happen, but in terms of actual prominent games, that was really the main event there for a while. Well, now that's all changed, and more and more college games are getting thrown on there, and even 
Amazon Prime paid a billion dollars or some some crazy amount of money just to air one NFL game on Black Friday. I believe it was the Dolphins in the Jets in, in a bit of a strange NFL game. But anyway, I, I just think I'd be perfectly fine if that game would be on Saturday instead, considering, again, day after Thanksgiving, it's kind of nice to be able to recover a little bit from Thanksgiving from my from my experience. But maybe that's just me and my copious amounts of red wine consumption that tends to happen toward the end of the night on Thanksgiving. Again, that's just me. Now, also the opener, I think, is another game that could be that could be moved once again. Murray State right now on the calendar for August 31st. But as we've seen before, the last couple of years, Missouri has moved that opener to a Thursday night. And honestly, if that just becomes a permanent tradition, Missouri playing on Thursday night to open up the season every year, I'm all about it. Because again, gives you a little bit more time for recovery into week two. The Thursday night doesn't mess up your preparation or scheduling or anything like that because, again, it is week one. It doesn't really matter if you're playing a little bit earlier. If anything, it's a slight advantage in terms of rest and recuperation. But also at the same time, the night game, August 31st, can be incredibly hot during the day during that time of year, as I obviously do not need to remind any of you in this area. So, again, make that a permanent part of the schedule, in my opinion. A little bit strange that we have to wait you know, months into the offseason to figure out what exactly is happening there. I suppose it's not the end of the world. I don't know how many people are specifically making a road trip for the Murray State game, but at the same time, less than ideal there. I like the Thursday games, but let's just make it a permanent fixture. How about that? And by the way, there's a certain percentage of the Missouri fan base that is very vocal in their displeasure about Missouri's October 12th game against UMass. Of course, this is sandwiched between a road game in College Station against Texas A&M, and then Missouri plays Auburn at home the next week after traveling to Amherst UMass on October 12th, Amherst, Massachusetts, I should say. I don't want to be the guy who says Columbia, Mizzou, so allow me to correct myself really quickly there. But a lot of fans are just upset that Missouri is taking a road trip to UMass for for fairly obvious reasons. What exactly is the upside for Missouri to take this long of a road trip to the great state of Massachusetts, as Eli Drinkwitz called it somewhat sarcastically a couple seasons ago when he wasn't terribly thrilled about Missouri having to make the trip all the way to Boston College a couple years ago. And well, I guess since Missouri ended up losing that football game, I can kind of see his point. At the same time, that was a a road trip that I was very much open to, of course. I ended up going to that that trip with my father. We had a great time up in Boston, one, one of my favorite cities in America to visit, quite honestly. So that was a lot of fun. On the other hand, well, Amherst just doesn't have quite the same cachet as Boston, does it? And UMass with its, I don't know, 17,000-person stadium or whatever, again, it's just not, what What exactly is the upside here for Missouri? When Eli Drinkwitz made his sarcastic remarks about the great state of Massachusetts, all he was really, all he was saying is, nothing wrong with Massachusetts, he was saying, we don't exactly get a lot of players from the great state of Massachusetts. Not only is that a, a long ways away geographically from Missouri, Massachusetts not exactly a hotbed of football talent either, let's be honest. I get it. It's a strange scheduling. Jim Sterk probably shouldn't have done it. And frankly, why schedule this game so many years out in advance? Northern Illinois, a game that's going to come up on the schedule here eventually for Missouri as well. Especially when you're scheduling these games years in advance that could potentially block more interesting games that could come up in the future. And now, well, you're going, oh, shoot, now we got to pay $2 million to UMass to buy out this game. Doesn't seem like that's going to happen. If you're expecting Missouri to buy out UMass from this football game, I'm not anticipating that at this point. And quite honestly, while it is a strange scheduling, it's just not something I'm going to lose sleep over. And if you're Missouri, okay, 
just learn from this. Don't schedule it again. I'm a little tired of Missouri fans crying about it, honestly. Let's just go up to UMass, win the game, come back, and move on with our lives, and hopefully never schedule a road game like this ever again. And coming up, while people are always resistant to change, they do love improvement. But I will say I think a lot of college fans do not think the new world of NIL and the transfer portal, they don't think it's an improvement. And I do have some sympathy for that take, but like it or not, I really think the new ways are better than the old ways for the Missouri Tigers. So I want to explain why coming up here in just a little bit, but first let's talk about FanDuel because as the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your $5 bet money line bet wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, well, there's no better place or time to get in on the action. The app is very easy to use with a wide range of betting options, including soccer, by the way. Although, I got to say, I don't know how to bet soccer yet. The whole three options thing of, well, I take the home team, the away team, or a tie. For instance, yesterday, I liked Dortmund to beat Paris Saint-Germain, but you know what? It was a 1-1 draw, so I would have just lost my money, even though I felt like I had the right side there. Not sure I'm ready to bet soccer yet, but if you are, you got to go to FanDuel.com slash college and kick off the NFL season. Yes, real football in style. That's FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. So I brought up on yesterday's program, there are a lot of upset Oklahoma Sooner fans right now because Caden Green, their their starting left left guard last season, entered the transfer portal. He was reportedly a, a lifelong Sooner fan, a guy who eventually moved to Missouri, though, played at Lee Summit North High School, same place as Williams Winery, by the way, the big time recruit for Missouri coming up here in the 2024 class. Again, I've just seen a lot of Sooner fans in the wake of Caden Green's decision to enter the transfer portal saying stuff like, oh, college football is dead and the portal has ruined the sport or just some version of that. And I've seen it not just from Sooner fans. I've seen it from Missouri fans as well after Makai Wingo transferred, after Dominic Lovett transferred. Even I've had some of some definite concerns about this type of thing. I always said, listen, there's nothing that college football can do to chase me away. I'm a diehard Missouri fan. I'm in. You're never going to get rid of me. I did worry about some of the casual fans, people who aren't as married to this sport as I am. I do worry about how this becomes sort of NFL light and then how is college football different than than the pros. But at the same time, without going into that over and over again, for as much as the new ways are a really hard thing for a lot of traditional college football fans to accept, when you're Missouri... Maybe it's time to let the old ways die because the bottom line is I think this actually gives Missouri a better chance to win and to win the big prize, to win the SEC even for that matter because an SEC title at this point would feel uh, maybe just a slight notch below a national championship at this point. That would be that important to me as a Missouri fan. But again, The old ways, as it were, have been going on for over 100 years, and basically the same handful of teams, the same blue blood programs, more or less have been competing for a national championship forever. Now, occasionally, a blue blood will drop out. Maybe a a Nebraska will, will, will lose its blue blood status, for example, and then Clemson somebody like that will step in and gain it. But still, it's just a very, very small club, I would say, for the most part. The teams that truly have a chance to win the whole thing. Well, I think this new world that we're living in, the new ways, as I've called it here, I think it's certainly upsetting the old ways and the old blue blood schools like Oklahoma. Because guess what? The Sooners are used to having 
the advantages. And forget about, you know, I'm not even going to speculate, although there's been, you know, real confirmed things over the years of, yeah, Oklahoma may have been paying some people over the years. Well, I'm sure Missouri and every school in the Big Eight and in the SEC and all this stuff has had some shenanigans over the years as well. But the bottom line is the money and everything else, the, the power structure of the old Big Eight and certainly the old Big 12 was to advantage was to the advantage of teams like Oklahoma and Texas because, quite honestly, they had the power and they were able to negotiate their terms. But long term, actually, them trying to bully around the rest of the teams in their conference kind of bit them in the ass, didn't it? Well, welcome to the SEC, where it's a new world, where everybody is essentially equal, even though they aren't. We all get the same the, the same revenue, the same cut of the pie from TV money anyway. And when it comes to the advantages, well, Missouri now is a really big player in name, image, and likeness. I'm not saying they're the number one player. They're not Oregon. They're not backed by Nike dollars or anything like that. But whoever it is behind the scenes, multiple people, of course, that are funding Missouri's name, image, and likeness program here, let's well, say we owe them a bit of a debt of gratitude. And again, whether you like this new structure, this new reality or not, you might as well accept it because as a Missouri fan, I can't predict the future, of course. But what I can do is analyze the past pretty well. And the past was not really conducive to Missouri having a great chance at winning a national championship or even an SEC championship. Whereas now, I still don't know how this is going to completely play out in the long run for Missouri. But I think the old ways, I think we had a pretty good idea of how it was going to play out. At least with the new ways, you have a chance for innovation and a chance for some relatively young and forward-looking people like Eli Drinkwitz and Desiree Reed Francois and Dennis Gates to be able to use that knowledge, that forward-thinking ability that they have and actually hopefully try to find some find some real advantages here. Find some Find some some things that have not been exploited by other programs, whatever that might be in terms of, again, NIL, in terms of injury recovery, all different kinds of avenues. Hey, if Missouri has some advantages now that Oklahoma doesn't have, well, that seems like the thing that they're most upset about of all to me. And from a Missouri fan's perspective, I absolutely love to see it. And thank you all so much for making this show one you absolutely love to see or listen to if you're an everyday or appreciate you all oh so much. You have absolutely no idea whatsoever. And you know what? Thanks as always for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen every day. And once again, for your second listen, check out Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel. So until next time, I'm John Miller, and this has been Locked on Mizzou.